This is Justin Pulitzer. This is my weekend review for Sunday, January 31st, 2016. The end of the worst start to a new year in, I think, in history, from what I understand. Anyway, there's a lot to cover, a lot of levels. And I always like to start off these weekend review videos with talking about the six market keys and the six Fed keys and where we stand in relation to those, because that's really what's been driving the market. So I'm going to kind of start out with a bit of a, um, I usually start out with the six Fed keys, I believe, or usually the six market keys or the six Fed keys. Let's start with the Fed keys just because um, that doesn't involve you necessarily moving around in the charts. Anyhow, the six Fed keys I use to gauge where the Fed, what the Fed is watching, how the economy is doing. And as we know, I've discussed at length that the jobs numbers as measured by the non-farm payrolls have been, you know, quoted by the media as being fairly strong, but in reality, they're, they're actually pretty weak. And a lot of those jobs are, have been in waiter, waitering, waitressing, bartending. In the summer, I had made the joke, although I wish it wasn't a joke because it was real, carnival ride operators. And we're, we, we, the last jobs report we had in um, really the one that the Fed kind of was keying off of that led to the interest rate rise was on temporary, a lot of temporary hires for the holiday and it, it was pretty much all part-time work. I mean, I don't really see where they're, you know, they're, they're saying that these, you know, these job numbers are so good. The Atlanta Fed, as well as most Wall Street firms, have been in a foot race to lower GDP estimates, and the fourth quarter came in at a paltry 0.7%, which is basically flat to stall speed. ISMs, I've discussed also, have come in contractionary, both under 50, both the service and the manufacturing. PMI, the same story, under 50. And the durable goods orders have been atrocious. A lot of that has been because of Boeing. I'm going to um, do a quick divergence to Boeing. You could see this was what happened. You know, they uh, they reported their numbers, goose egg, basically down here to some re to su support. So we're going to have to really see how this plays out. You know, we're at a very critical point here. I think you can use Boeing as a um, the durable du goods. Excuse me, a durable goods proxy. You have double hammers basically here, a double bottom. If you lose this, I think it's going to be a cascade lower. So Boeing is going to be a very quick close tell and something that we need to pay a lot of attention to. Anyway, let's get back to it. So the durable goods have been terrible, and I know that a lot of people have been citing that autos have been good and housing has been good and aircraft have been good. So we now lost aircraft Autos are suspicious, you know, it's, it seems like we're under peak autos. I don't really want to go through those stocks, but they have not been able to get out of their own way. And housing, up until like recently, has been a pretty steep decline as well. The dollar that I can get into, um, I, let's see, UUP, oops, we got to delete that first. The UUP, as I, I've basically outlined has a range, a medium range, and anything above that medium range is troubling. And this, what what happened here? You basically have been, we're making lower highs and now broke this sort of ascending trend line to the downside, but we had this big spike up here. Why did that happen? Well, we had a bit of a game changer happen to us um, Thursday night that led into Friday's rally, and that was the Bank of Japan, the BOJ, has decided to take their interest rates negative, meaning they are so worried about their growth and their basically a recession in their economy that they are not, basically not going to pay interest on, on debt, and they are going to basically charge you to hold your money. As crazy as that sounds, that is actually... In reality, what is happening? That, of course, spiked the dollar. And I had tweeted out and made the statement that this to me is, I, I know this term is thrown around a lot lately, but this to me is really a game changer. And if this doesn't knock the Fed off of their complacency mantle of raising interest rates into a weakening global economy, I really don't know what will. This really should do it. And... 
I believe that the, I will illustrate to you some of the th other th signs of some levels that we can use to gauge how that is going to play out. Anyway, that to me, like I said, was a game changer Friday. It changed the charts in the S&P a little bit, and we're going to get into that right now. Let's start off with the six market keys, that being the VIX. So, um, slight detour with the VIX. Last week in the video, I had talked about some ranges and levels, and I had a lot of people request that I make a key. So, here it is, the VIX key. 0 to 15, low IV. 16 to 17 is fair. 18 to 19 is sort of medium, the upper end of range where you want to start thinking about selling premium. I might add that note in. 20 to 22 is getting to be elevated. 23 to 25 is the high end of the range. So that's sort of where you really need to see volatility top out or else you start getting into crash risk, which starts happening above 25 to 31. And then if you're above 31, it is more likely than not that you are involved in a crash scenario. I would even say that if you start closing on, like, let's say Friday is above 25, you have potential for a crash. But anything above 31, it's probably already underway. So that is my VIX key. I hope that satisfies the, the masses who were demanding one. And here it is. Write it down at your le leisure. So where are we with regard to the VIX? I have affectionately drawn a channel. I have noted on past videos that we are making higher, high, higher highs. I'm sorry, higher lows, and now also higher highs. However, it is sort of contained within a channel at the moment. We did kind of have a bit of a look above and fail, and now coming back down. And I've talked about some key levels. 25 here is supported. Now it broke. Then the 22 is supported. Now those broke. And now we had a bit of a look below 20 and fail, and we're holding around 20. There is risk that this could rally back up to 22. That's actually been sort of the pattern of the VIX, that it test support, rallies, then comes back down and then breaks it. So you really need to see the t this hold below 22s and then firmly break the 20s in my view to say that the rally has a lot of legs to it. If it starts getting back above, above 22 and closer to 25, I'm going to start thinking that the move that happened on Friday might have been a bit of a head fake, but as of now, I think you sort of have to take it on face value based on the BOJ and based on the fact that we're over the Fed day range. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I will, re I will kind of circle back to that when I discuss SPY. Anyway, for now with the VIX, we held the 100 MA and the 50 MA and the 20. So you'd have to be on guard for some type of a bounce. However, I think it is also potentially possible that this does now want to come back down retest into the 17s, which will probably support, at least in the beginning, maybe even get a test to the end of the channel. That has been sort of the pattern is what's happened, although this, uh, this spike didn't quite get to the top end of the channel. This is my first week that I drew have drawn in the top end of the channel because these highs kind of connected. Uh, these did not, so I didn't think it was important, but now I think that we can say that there is a bit of a channel in play. The one piece of disturbing information with that is that it's an up channel. So that isn't necessarily bode well for the market in the longer term. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves with um, that analysis just yet. I already went over the dollar. Um, the UUP, again, that is above the range. It is into a little bit of resistance, although we are now kind of looking above these highs, if you start getting above these, I think we're going to have some some issues. Um, I wanted to show you on the DX, which is sort of the main, the real, the big boy um, contract, the dollar, that's the ETF, the UUP. You can see, though, we are really dangerously close. You know, every, I've heard a lot of chartists talk about how the dollar has for sure topped. Um, I don't know that. I can tell you this, that we have one, two, three, I would almost count this as four attempts or so at breaking out. And, you know, these are not, these are kind of getting to be poorer highs. And if we break through here, I don't want to get into the charts too much. But there are some Fibonacci extensions. There's a 61.8 up here around the 102, 102, close to 102s. And on a bigger chart, take my word for it, it would not take a very much of a move to get to 105, 106. And if that happens, 
look out below, the market will not be very happy. We're going to have to keep a very close eye on this dollar. This, to me, could be one of the biggest challenges that the market has seen in quite some time. Got to learn to delete those before I type in. The bonds. TLT is the proxy for bonds. You can see they are getting a little bit to the um, overbought point. The interesting news, though, is that when the Fed cut interest rates, bonds didn't tank, which is what they should have done. Meaning, <coughs> excuse me, as interest rates rise, prices should go lower. Instead, when the Fed hiked, bond prices rose and yields went lower. And that, to me, has me thinking a few things. One is that the market is thinking that we have a recession looming. And it really wouldn't surprise me if that happens because we have basically a stall speed GDP. We know the economies are getting weaker, not stronger. And that doesn't necessarily bode well for a robust gross domestic product. The bonds here are into an upper part of some resistance. They are basically have the opportunity to continue up higher. I have said for a while, though, that anything above basically 123.15, which was the 2009 crash low, keep in mind we are above the highs of the worst period in financial history in like maybe 100 years. Um, and that, and now we are still, we, interest rates are that low that we are above that area, meaning that their prospects for growth are not really looking all of that great. Um, there is a bit of a channel I had drawn. We kind of went below there. Now we're back into it. There are some reference levels up here. This spike here wouldn't surprise me to see if we got back up to the 128, 129. And then the real breakdown here kind of came at the 61.8 retracement, which would be up around 129. So there is some room to the upside. If, as long as we're above 126.36, I would say that the path of least resistance is higher. If we come back below there, then I would say that this is looking like this is now an upper part of a range and that we will probably come back a bit lower. One more thing to be said on the bonds before we move on. I believe that part of the strength here is also because of wealthy people in other countries not having FDIC insurance in their kind of local government banks. And when the things kind of go haywire, when they go pear-shaped, as they say, people look for a return of their capital, not necessarily on their capital. And federally insured U.S. Treasury bonds are their FDIC equivalent. They are a very deep and liquid market. It's very easy for people to maneuver in and out of them without moving price on themselves. And I believe that these are basically being used as, I wouldn't say safe deposit boxes because there is fluctuation, but it's kind of like the safest game in town. So keep that in mind. That's also probably been why there's been some pressure on the dollar because they're buying in bonds and you need to buy them in dollars. So you have to convert your other currencies into dollars and store them here. Um, the dollar has been appreciating. So think about this. You're in a foreign currency that's depreciating. You want to store your value. You put them into U.S. Treasuries. You get price appreciation plus currency appreciation. It's like a double whammy. So people who have been in bonds are kind of um, minting money, so to speak. Oil. Oil has been the key driver to what the algorithmic trading has been. I, I would say at any given point in time, there are, we get into, we once in a while get into periods of time where algorithms for the S&P futures key off something. And in this instance, they are keying off of oil. I don't necessarily know that the USO is the best mark to, um, to visit to, to, to kind of go over oil. So I'm going to flip to the uh, CL for a moment because that's kind of the continuous contract here. So something, a few things to note about oil. One is the reference low from the 2009 crash low was 3320. We have taken that out. 
we now have what should be a kind of an inverse head and shoulders forming. You could see here's the left shoulder, here's the head, and here's the right shoulder, and now we are kind of breaking out to the upside, back above the 3320. I would say as long as you're above 3320, the path of least resistance is for still higher, maybe 37, potentially um, the 50 MA, which is in 36s. We might even want to get up to the downtrend line here, close to close to 40. Um, I think it, if it happened immediately, it would be in the 39s. If we kind of start breaking back below here and getting below the 20 and getting below this minor uptrend, then I don't know that the worst for oil is in in kind of in the system. So just keep an eye on this 3320. It's a very important number. You can see we got back above here. We had a bit of a look below, closed above. If you start violating this kind of retest low, 3265, then I'm going to start getting a little bit more nervous on the prospects of oil going higher. If you can take out this breakout bar, which is 3482, we should continue higher. That is the deal with oil. Some of the oil stocks. Exxon. They have one of the most impressive balance sheets that the world has ever known. They are kind of holding some support down here. Yield is very important. These are kind of going to be like the last men standing, I think, Exxon and Chevron. What I do like here is that we are in a bit of an uptrend. We captured and closed over the 50-day moving average, which is something we couldn't do here, we couldn't do here. It had been supporting for a while, then became some resistance, and now we have the potential for it to be breaking over the 50 MA again. Really key level. I always say Exxon over, let's just say 76, it's really 75, 98, is you want to be more long than, than short. You can see that the 20 MA now has supported above that area. That is a good sign. If you start getting back below there, you know, you want to be a little bit more cautious. So 76, let's say, is kind of the line in the sand. Potentially that we go back up to 80. That's where I would think we could uh, see maybe the, uh, the 200 MA. One thing that's encouraging to me is Chevron. They had on Friday one ugly, ugly quarter. And the stock had a bit of a look below on the prior day's range and then spent the entire rest of the day rallying, closed above the prior day's high, and basically kind of just stalled out on the 100-day. I will now say this. We are still in a bit of a downtrend. We have a little bit of moving average resistance above hand. But we now have a range that we can use as a proxy. Anything above 86.71, bullish. Anything below this low, the earnings day low, 82.95, I will say is more likely bearish. And we would probably retest the 79s relatively quickly. So that's my view on Chevron. Another really big key that the market has been keying off of has been China. Now, the FXI has done a few things that are interesting to me. One, they peaked out. Obviously, they had a bit of a slow decline, which got steep, had a bounce, kind of tried to hold, broke down below these lows, below this neckline, consolidated here, bear flag, broke to the upside, retested the main breakdown, and then it has basically listed lower and sold off and sold off hard. It's tested close to some reference lows and now looks like it's trying to bounce a little bit. So what's the dealio? The story with China is as long as it's not crashing, it's okay for our markets. When it gets steep and when it crashes, it matters. If it just goes sideways and chops and doesn't do anything in a steep fashion, it doesn't matter here. We are bombed out majorly stochastically. It is due for some bit of a rally. You have a higher low in place, confirmed now by a higher high on this leg. We do have some 20-day moving average resistance, which you can see here has been, we got a little bit above it, but has for the most part been trouble. So let's see how we deal with the 20. Wouldn't shock me to see if we get back into this range somewhere on this low. 
which was 3280 or up to this body, which is sort of like where the distribution you could see starts. So somewhere near that distribution, that 33s, 34s, which would also coincide close to the, I guess, downtrend would be interesting. If we can get that rally, I think it would likely do a lot, do kind of do wonders for the U.S. equity market. Some Chinese stocks. Not as pretty of a picture. This is BABA. Now, BABA bottomed back here. It had quite a strong rally. Basically, right up into this distribution, which was a buzzsaw. Backed off a bit with some responsive sellers, which is very much to be um, expected. Rallied back up and formed a bit of a consolidation shelf with higher lows and equal highs. This pattern should should that's the key word have resolved higher it did not it broke down below these lows below these lows below these lows basically has been kind of hugging the 618 and kissing the canvas in these lows you have basically double bottom here the one thing i don't love is that the earnings number look at this candle this is like this is just disgusting uh you had a bit of a obviously a gap up to the top of the range here and completely reversed with a huge engulfing pattern that took out one two three four five five days or so of trading you've had a bit of a responsive bounce up and you closed fairly weak it did not close below this low however so if you're long the baba you want to use 66, 67, I would think. Anything, a close below there to me is a GTFO and maybe a right or right out short. If you break these two hammers, um, this 6534 to 6540, this basic almost double bottom, this will probably be a cascade to retest the old all-time low. I would be looking for a short setup below here to come lower. If you can take out the earnings day high of day, the 7315 and this range high, I would say it's a long and you will probably fill in some of these gaps, maybe retest the 50 and the 200. So that's how I see Baba. No ifs, ands, or buts. I was really hoping that Baidu would continue lower into their earnings However, we basically retested the breakout, have a little bit of excess, and now we have taken cleared that high. So it seems like Baidu is probably going to rally. It's, it's down a bit. I, I mean, the best thing that this could do to me is really dump hard ahead of their numbers and kind of maybe come back into here, like these 130s and the trend line. I know this is a bit of a messy chart. I have a lot of Fibonacci's on with a lot of different time frames. I apologize for that. But focus on this low here. Focus on this green line, this channel here. Let me get rid of this uh, down channel. I guess I can't really get rid of the down channel because we're now back in the down channel. So we'll leave the down channel. We have a downtrend, though, and we are below that downtrend. So I would be looking for a move back up to downtrend as a shortable instance or a move back down to these reference lows as a somewhere between... The body of the flash crash low, which is 125 to 130, that pocket to me would be buyable if it's particularly, if it's ahead of the numbers. I would probably play long with some type of a call spread or a short put spread, meaning, a bull, or I should say a bull put spread, meaning you sell a higher strike and buy a lower strike. Um, so that's sort of what I'm thinking, either a short against the downtrend line or a buy at these reference lows, or the body, and the dominant trend line. Maybe I'll make that a little bit more bold. Let's make it like a three. There we go. So that's what I'm thinking with the buy deal. Another main proxy for risk on, risk off, all that fanciness is the biotech. This is a pretty weird chart you had a head and shoulders top breakdown retest the neckline breakdown confirmed basic double bottom on trend 
bare flag, which resolved higher, now formed an inverse head and shoulders here, breaking down, retesting, and then ultimately <laughs> breaking down past the reference lows. That is just mind-bogglingly bearish. Um, you've broken secondary trend, primary trend, the reference lows, the breakout area, and you're kind of just in a, um, you know, a spiraling, ugly pattern. The good news is the stochastics are a little bit bombed out. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to rally, but there is some reference lows down here in the 47s and the 42s. That was, and it's also a volume distribution. I would think, given the steepness of this, that this area could be viable for a bounce, probably back to retest into this area. But this is pretty, pretty fuggles. Um, sorry to be using the slang today. It is Sunday, and I'm, I guess I get a little bit passionate when I talk about my biotech. I think one of the problems for biotech, I would say the problem for biotech, has been politicians basically talking smack. Why has that been happening? Because everyone basically in the country buys prescription drugs or some type of drugs, and that is a good talking point. You know, healthcare, when you take a look at what people have spent spending their money on, like the vast majority of the public, they have been bu buying, haven't been buying, you know, as many goods and services as they have been s increasing their spending on health care. That is not good. Um, that is a drain on the economy. It's sort of like all the money they've been saving, e and then some, I should say, not even um, just all the money, but and then some that they've been spending on savings from gasoline. They've been wasting, I wouldn't say wasting, but have been spending on health care. That, to me, is a little bit troubling. So as I was talking here, I guess I was trying to chew gum and walk at the same time, or in this case, talk about the reasons for the down move being politicians like Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and now even Donald Trump talking about... Um, why the why? Let's talk about the technicals and how just how bad things can get. I drew in here a Fibonacci extension, a hundred percent and an extension lower. Let me just clean this up a little bit. And that number, the 1.618 Fibonacci extension, would take you down to 21208. We have a 12. A, a, this is basically a hundred percent retracement of the entire move in biotech. So. And, and it's also on a, from the 2009 lows, a hundred, you know, I don't want to delete these because these numbers, these Fibonacci levels are going to come in. You see, these are real charts. You know, there's no paper money that's traded here. This is, this is real. This is real. This is what I really use. And I'm sorry if the charts are a little messy. I, I am trying to do my best to um, keep them clean, but... The truth is, is that life isn't clean, the markets aren't clean, and charts get messy. So <clears throat> you do have some reference lows here, but if you project this Fibonacci extension lower, it takes you basically down to close to these 100% reference lows and the big 61.8 from the 2009 crash low to the peak up here on 7.17 and that would take you down to here. Um, I like playing that with put ratios, or if you want, I wouldn't do it on a breakdown, but on some type of a rally back put spreads. You can see we have a, um, I drew a regression line here connecting these. It, this was really originally a downtrend line, and it's now be, kind of become a regression line. You can see anytime we trade on either side of it, it becomes unsustainable, and it's actually resisted and now supported. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see a move back to that. I think you can kind of short on the uh, either at it or above it if you want to start building a position. Conveniently, if it's near these reference lows or somewhere, maybe if we somehow make it back into midway into this chop, uh, 306.11. But I do think we are unfortunately heading back down to that level, the 100% retracement, the 61.8 from the 2009 crash low, and basically completing the mountain lower. 
Kind of sorry to say, I've been talking about peak earnings. You know, Gilead, they had a competitor come out with some with some new drugs that are eating going to eat into their margins. They are below their flash crash low, the breakout area, these reference lows, and it was sort of a gap and go here. This is a heavily owned name. I, I realize it's really heavily oversold. I would love for this to do something like get really steep ahead of their numbers because I do think their earnings are actually going to be still be pretty good, at least for this quarter. And while the context and backdrop, keep that in mind, of the big trend of the of the, the kind of the sector is lower. If this got much steeper into their numbers, it would probably set up for a shake and bake. And I would think that it would probably have some type of a check back to retest these lows. Um, this could also be a look below and fail, meaning if we gapped up by some miracle on Monday over 8530, this can be seen as a morning star or an island reversal, and the play might be back to the upside. However, the pattern is really kind of bearish. I, I shouldn't say kind of, it is we had this sloppiness below trend again, and now we're just making new lows off lower highs. Not good, but I do think that if this does get bombed out enough ahead of the ahead of the numbers, it could set up for a, a bounce play. So it's going to be kind of a Costanza, maybe do the opposite. If they rally it ahead of the number, it might be um, a fade, and if they more better play would be if they kind of kill it ahead of the number, it probably could set up for a bounce play. Celgene also lower highs, lower lows, um, holding the regression line. Isn't it amazing how these charts work? Um, holding, bounce the regression line, bounce the regression line. So um, I think that is that is not below the flash crash low, but it is below trend. It is below this sort of funnel, this accumulation funnel. So I would be a little bit cautious with these. I, I think that they are more now kind of short the rally than buy the dip stocks. Sorry, but it just is what it is. SPY is, <sighs> I have proposed that this could be construed as the mountain and now we are, you have the symmetry here and now we are on the other side of the mountain. This did rally back up quite high to a lower high, still lower high, major breakdown, held the low and now rallied, um, bombed out on the stochastics, but, 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 but. We are now making higher lows and now higher highs on this leg. So the leg could have a little bit more room to run. How do we know this to be the case? Well, anyone who's followed me before has probably heard this again and will, if you continue to stick with me, will hear it again at some point. We key off of Fed Day ranges. The high of that day was 191.56. The low of that day was 187.06. The play is either long over that high of day or short below that low of day. I will show you some other interesting things in the chart here. We have broken out now above the Fed day range. We are above the 20 day moving average, which is, which is good. Back sort of testing into the channel. Now, take a look where this, the, this low was, where this body is, and take a look at where, how this had, had played out the last time. You had a rally back up. If you lose this low now, this is the Fed day, I would say, if we start getting in back into the Fed day range, you have to be a little bit cautious. I believe that is 1910 on the ES, and in the SPY here, it's 191.56. Anything into that range, to me, gets a little bit too much. It's like more than half of this day. It gets a little iffy. And if you lose this day, like, for example, if Monday is really bearish and we take out the low of this day, I will be playing short below 189.88. I will be playing test short with a stop then over, the, I guess, the Fed day high, high of day. If we keep going... I think you can continue to be long. So how much move are we expecting this week? The SPY is expecting a $4, 4.124 move. If you add that on to where we closed here, the insanity of my levels starts to really play out. 197.85 is where it would take you. Look at what comes into play right there. 197.86, one tick above. 
that is the upper part of this range where the real breakdowns always take place or where the rallies take place. This is where the rubber will meet the road. I believe that it is possible that we can overshoot that to 199 or even to 200. That is where these triple bottoms were, where we tried to look below, failed, kind of came up, and then ultimately cascaded down from. I am looking for a long move to play out to this area. This is also a 61.8, by the way, where, of this entire range where this broke down from. This, to me, would be an absolute screaming right or right out short situation. You can try it here. You can see how it reacts. You can try it here. This would also coincide with potentially some downtrends. I don't know how fast it's going to get there. It could also coincide with a 50-day moving, a declining 50 and 100-day moving average. The more technicals that you can kind of throw together as roadblocks or in the other case as support, the better. Like if this were to shoot up the next couple of days and then hit the 61.8 and the declining 50 and 100 day moving average, I would probably be looking to use this as a swing short, at the very least a day trade short. So we could be moving up to this area based on what the market making maker expected move is. If we go down, it says 189.60, um, which look is the low of this day, um, 189.88. So it would be a move below there. And a move below there, as we've discussed, would be basically short. And uh, I, I believe that this would be a false breakout and it would coincide with uh, some real trouble. It would also start, look, at, remember that level I was talking here? That would take you below this area, below this area, more importantly, below this range. And I think that we would come back down and likely um, maybe even retest the, the lows there or at least the um, kind of the check back lows. So that's my view on SPY. Uh, let's do IWM. I'm not a huge fan of the, what's been going on in IWM. It's pretty bearish. Um, you can see we got back, we got to the 95s. This is basically below the, it's checking back here to the backside of the old trend line, the 20 day moving average and getting close to this breakdown. So IWM could kind of be the fly in the ointment here that kind of screws us up. If there is a move back in, it would coincide, I think with these lows and really where this volume distribution picks up. So I would think somewhere between the 106 and maybe the 109 potentially 110 look that's really where this all really broke down from it's also the 50 day i don't know if you're going to get up that high you know when something is really bearish a 382 is sort of where it goes to so we're going to have to see how that plays out this to me is very crucial um this could be just a false breakdown and then we're going to come back up into range but Monday here is going to be very important. You can see we have that the range low and the backside there. So IWM has got a, a lot to prove. It's been the weakest of the week. Qs have been the stronger of all of the indices. You can see this is really the consolidation. We haven't really closed any bodies with the exception of maybe these couple of days below there, and we are well above into that range here. Um, we are up to the 104, 105, also a declining 20-day moving average. It's very. This is obviously very important. The good news is, is that you have these multiple days down and then this big kind of body that closed above them. So you took back all of like that weakness from the prior week. And you also have a higher low and now kind of starting to make higher highs. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit of a move higher in Qs. What is that going to depend on? Well, some of the problem I see with the queues are as follows. First is Apple. They reported a number, and Tim Cook's commentary was rather bearish. You basically were up to the resistance, collapsed back down, now kind of had a little bit of a look below. Apple likes to fill gaps, so I think that it could this could get even back up to 100, but... The problem is is that they their numbers they reported weren't that good and the only real product launch they have before the next earnings in April is the watch in which is in March. 
I actually think the watch is going to do really well, the second gen. I know from myself and from other people I know, they're waiting for the second generation. So that could play out. Um, but I do think that somewhere between the 100 and 100, the 103, if you get the gap fill, is probably going to be a good right or right out short attempt. But I have been kind of looking for Apple to retest this sort of 61.8, which is the 85 area. It's also going to coincide with the primary trend in Apple. The, so that, to me, is a really amazing right or right out type of a buy if this somehow works its way down there. A 100% round trip from those that really great quarter that got everything started would be 74.96, so let's say 75. So I think between 85 and 75 is probably going to be the bottom in Apple. That's just my thinking. Let's do Fang. Facebook. So, what can I say? This has been one of my favorite stocks for quite a while. I hated the IPO. I turned and got bullish around 20. It did get to 19, but I have really never looked back with my overall trend of Facebook, although I have said that I have been short-term concerned but long-term bullish, if that makes sense. I talked about this trend here being a little bit bearish, as it did, there was a potential for a breakdown. We did have that breakdown. It actually went a little bit lower than I had expected that this would go initially, although that shouldn't surprise me because this did as well. Um, I had talked about 83 and 86 being the true support. We held at 89. I had talked about the 200 MA being a buy opportunity. I know a few people did. They had told me that they bought it. I'm proud of them as well. Um, this was a bit of a shake and bake, and we know what's happening here. We are going higher. Um, so how much higher are we going to go in Facebook? Now, you are above a, a small 1.618 Fib extension, which got to the 109 and even overshot to the 110. A little cautious here because, as I discussed in biotech, a downward regression line. We have an upward regression line in Facebook. And anytime we have traded, except with this exception of this period, which didn't really go very much far, although it did spend time above, it has been some pretty grim resistance. We did get a little bit above there and then came back here. We stopped right to it here, a smidgen above couldn't hold above and then had these responsive action, the same thing here. Now we are getting very close to it again. However, there is a bigger 1.618 Fibonacci extension up in the 116s and an even still bigger one up at 123.8. I do think it will get there at some point. Um, I do also think that, that it is going to see lower at some point as well. So as long as you're above 109, 28 to 110, 65, or let's keep it even more simple, the gap day, high of day, 110, 34, anything above there is bullish. Anything below into this range is sort of neutral. Below there is bearish, iffy for a gap fill type of a situation. Uh, 50 MA had been support. It never really became resistance here uh, on this move at least so i would be thinking that if there was ever some type of a pullback to the 50 that it would be a buy at least for right or right out um short term i do think still higher but i am going to say anything above the regression line starts becoming a sale or a progression line let's coin that phrase instead of a regression line because it's not going down the progression line would be to me an opportunity to sell some facebook um, I'm going to finish up with these fangs. Of course, the platform is stalled here, which is not good. All right, there we go. Um, Amazon. So we all kind of know what happened here. Um, we basically topped out, came down, got close to the 61.8. I was really actually hoping for a move down to the primary trend line, although we may get one now. People rallied it um, back up a little bit, and then you had this big move here ahead of earnings. This was on Facebook, and then we sold off quite hard, although people did use that opportunity to buy the stock, which is, I guess, healthy. But I still think that um, 
anything below this day's range here, I think that uh, there will be some interested sellers into this bottom body anywhere in the low 600s if it was able to kind of fill to the lower part of the gap. But I do believe I would like put ratios for a move down to the primary trend and then obviously use that as a write or write out opportunity for a long trade or to at the very least sell some puts. You have some reference lows here. They should probably hold. Um, I do think that we will see the 490 to 500 there area, somewhere in these 500, low 500s, though. So we'll have to see how that plays out, but Amazon is losing a little bit of its um, its luster. It's also not a really great seasonal time for Amazon. You know, they people like to buy that when it's kind of getting ready to run into the holidays. Um, you can see this kind of bottomed out in October here. It even retested it early January. So there is some precedence for bottoming out in January, but we are up a lot, and it looks like uh, we could be uh, coming down a little bit lower here in Amazon. Netflix. So I am actually short Netflix via put ratios for next week. I think I have on the 85.80 and 85.79 and also 80.74s and 75s. Um, you can see the low, the flash crash low here was the 85 half. There's also a bit of a gap, one little gap fill here um, around 80, what was this? <clears throat> Excuse me, 84, basically 80, 83, 84. And there's also this range, um, also a bigger 61.8, somewhere in the 77 level. So I do think that that area will probably catch it at least um, if we continue lower. The after hours dump from this earnings, it never saw that regular trading hours was 93.55. We are below there. It's really acting rather sluggishly. You can see this never even really rallied. It originally actually had rallied after hours on their earnings, but wound up being a really bearish day, as you can see here, and it's just continuing to lower. Um, I do think that the 85 area will probably hold at least for the time being. Um, longer term, uh, the big breakout was from 70. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to get there. There is a primary trend that comes into play down in the um, in the low 60s. It's also a really high volume node. Um, I don't know that we're going to get there right away. I do think that it could get there eventually. I'm going to make that a little bit more bold. Um, we are getting bombed out stochastically. I, I will um, be looking to close those put ratios if we can get into these areas maybe even try some type of a reversal play for a bounce back up but longer term um, this looks like it does want to correct a little bit more um, we are getting like I said to the lower end of the range so it's kind of hard to say it's just going to break um, this is basically coming from a double top all-time high so the trend is now lower lows and lower highs so the pattern is a little bit more bearish on 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 Netflix, I would be looking to kind of short rallies now as opposed to kind of play by the dips. But down here, uh, yeah, I am a little bit more interested, and I am playing that with put ratios. Google's reporting next week. I honestly am a little bit nervous because it's rallying into the number. You know, I, I believe Facebook is taking some share from them, but, I, I, you know, Google probably will have a pretty good number. Um it would not surprise me to see this do some type of a move and really test the channel highs again. Um, I, I really believe, though, that you know you had continuation in Facebook. You had the opportunity after they reported to also play it. I believe that the second mouse kind of is the ones that get the cheese. Facebook was good, but Amazon and Netflix were both bad. So will Google be good? Uh, probably, but I would be a little bit cautious considering it is now rallying into the number. I would have preferred this to be down lower ahead of the print, but I think it's going to be a second mouse kind of gets the cheese to play this for continuation in my view. I haven't covered Priceline in a while. Um, I w have been getting some requests. Priceline is doing something that is interesting me, coming, being bombed out stochastically, coming down from an all-time high, basically, of one leg down, two legs down. We might get the third, but it, it strikes me that there might be some type of a bounce, considering there is a reference low in the 990s. This is a trend break, though, which is not good. But we are basically coming down into earnings, into a reference low, um, if they rally it ahead of time up to the channel, it's probably going to be playing for a leg three. But if they continue it down into the number, I would say that it's probably going to be 
along for a bounce. That's just my that's just my thinking. I tend to kind of like to do the opposite of what things do ahead of their earnings numbers. Anyhow, um, I'm going to end on Alchemies. That's a stock that I've been kind of really waiting for a long time for this to come down. It's a um, they make um, opiate like you know basically um, opiates. So they basically are drug dealers. <laughs> That doesn't really get old too fast, but they are b below this trend, below this trend, below the 61.8, and they have some more primary trends coming into play. Also, a gap fill where this kind of all got started around 25.60. It's starting to bounce a little bit ahead of there, but I would be an interested buyer somewhere between 25 and the 21s. Um, I think that that area will be um, will be viable, probably either selling puts or playing put ratios for a move down there. We are really bombed out stochastically, so it's due for a bounce. But I do think on any further weakness, it's probably a good area for a right or right out. Anyhow, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you liked my video, please be sure to like it. Um, subscribe to my channel so you get notifications when I post new videos. And please leave some comments. That's what helps me make the videos better. Anyhow, um, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'll see you on the stream on Twitter. My handle is at Justin Pulitzer. Let's have a good rest of our Sunday night and a good trading week and cheers.